Greetings from the far side of the galaxy, I'm Fury, your host most doing more filler content. Recently, to my community page, I posted this question, who is your furry guilty pleasure character? And these are your responses. Our first comment is a doozy, because we have Big the Cat. He has that dad who just wants the fishing energy to him. I want to fish with him. You know the video is going to be good when Big the Cat is the first thing on this list. While Big isn't what I had in mind when I meant guilty pleasure character, that is oddly accurate. Even as far as Sonic characters go, Big the Cat is not one you see often. He falls into that odd category of character where he's no one's favorite, but judging by his appearance in Sonic Frontiers, he's definitely someone people like. A character that was more in line with what I was thinking when I asked this question is in the next comment. Reese from Beastars. I know he's like sick and twisted, but aren't we all? Plus, he's a bear, so is a win for me. Remember to stay hydrated. Reese. now that's a classic problematic fave and guilty pleasure character. There's something about the self-delusion he has regarding eating Tim that makes him sympathetic despite how monstrously he's betrayed. Though, this may be a hot take, I prefer the way he's drawn in the manga over the anime. The anime just makes him look a little too weird. I don't have anything clever to say to introduce the next comment because I don't remember a damn thing about Lilo and Stitch. I think I last watched that movie when I was like 8 in elementary school. Let's see, I'd say my guilty pleasure would be the evil scientist Jumbo Chukiba from Lilo and Stitch. He is very smart, has a Russian accent, is very strong, and is big and adorable in his own way. When watching the series slash movies he has been in, he's never failed to make me laugh. What's not to like? I mean, there is the fact that he did pull an Albert Wesker and try to create like a biological super weapon or whatever the fuck Stitch is supposed to be. He very much did do that, so that's something not to like. Other than that, yeah, I suppose he's fine. I still don't know why an alien of all things has a Russian accent though. Summoning the next comment from my comp. Jose from the Shin Megami Tensei series. He's not even that good, but I always make sure to include him in my party purely for the eye candy in almost every single SMT game that has him. Don't worry, I promise I'm ashamed. Despite Jose's popularity, I never really liked him all that much. His design is just super basic, and like you mentioned, he's not that good. That's doubly so in the most recent release, SMT5, where he's a physical demon, in the game where giving yourself a physical build is always better. Like at the point that he becomes available, you can have over 100 points in strength, power charge, and Sakanagi, which is an almighty physical skill. Keeping up with SMT, we have the next comment, Gira Makala from SMT. When I first got into the series, he randomly just became a favorite of mine. Only used him once, but yeah. And this is on the exact opposite side of the spectrum as Jose. Why did you only use him once? Girmakala is goaded. Dude reflects like all physical skills and that's something that's always useful. Also, I was going to do his boss fight in SMT5 to get footage for this segment, but guess who literally just did that right before making this video? God, I hate myself sometimes. Once more, I know nothing about Kipo, so there's nothing clever I can say to introduce the next comment. Scarlemagne from Kipo in the Age of Wonder Beast. Kipo spoiler ahead. He was a psychopathic dictator that killed people for his amusement and called for all humans to go extinct in that role. But his backstory is so sad and the way he changes his ways seeing his point of view was majorly wrong was amazing. I know this is going to be a stupid complaint, but whatever. Maybe it's just the fact that there's Scar from Lion King and Snugglemane from Mau Mau. When I read the name Scarlemagne, I expected it to be a lion and I'm kind of mad it's a mandrill. But I must admit, a psychopathic dictator is exactly what I had in mind when I asked who's your guilty pleasure character. The next comment was the winner winner chicken dinner. No, wait, isn't that PUBG not Fortnite? You know what, just, just scrap that, just scrap that. Move on to the comment, move on to the comment. Guilty pleasure? Well, I guess that has to be Wendell from Fortnite as I don't even really play the game. Something about his cute dopey looks is it. Is there anything more classic than simping for a character from something you refuse to play and or watch? Especially for a game with microtransactions, I can't count the amount of times I've seen someone draw art of a character from Asamo while saying, I will never play this game. Because I'm stupid and refuse to care about a character from something I don't play or watch is the entire reason I'm even playing Zenless Zone Zero. Would you believe me if I said the next comment was ignored by Nintendo? Wolf O'Donnell from Star Fox. I honestly don't know why, the guy has very little personality outside of being a rival to Fox and looking cool slash edgy. 
but I guess some mysteries will last forever. You know, you bring up a really good point I don't see people make often. Wolf has like nothing in the actual series he comes from. Like I'm being dead ass right now, a fox in space has given Wolf more attention than anything in the Star Fox canon. Like seriously, Wolf just has like no backstory, and I mean like no backstory. Wolf is a testament to how a design can carry people's interest in a character because it's quite clear that the writers at Star Fox ain't give one shit about him. The next comment won't get out of me swamp. I have a ton of modern crushes, but these were of my first few for both male and female characters. Male character wise, Puss in Boots from Shrek always had lovable charisma to him combined with his VA being able to sell the character's role makes it hard for me not to love him. Female character wise, it is Tigress from Kung Fu Panda. She's just a strong, stoic female character who has a softer side when she opens up who is also good at fighting. I just find very appealing. Puss in Boots has become a lot more common now, but considering you say from Shrek and not specifically The Last Wish, that's a bit of a hot take which is pretty much the exact opposite of Tigris. People have simped for her since the first movie came out like a decade ago. Hang on, wait, how long has it been since the first Kung Fu Panda movie came out? Oh my God, the original Kung Fu Panda movie came out 16 years ago. I'm only 23, I shouldn't be feeling old. This next comment is my special. Panda from JJK. Not only is he the best character in the series, but he's just so perfect. I have a massive collection of panda merch I've bought from Japan for the panda shrine in my room. Figures, keychains, standees. Plus, I have a soft spot for furry anime bears. Cough, cough, Rees from Beastars. You're absolutely right. Not only is Panda peak, he's under fucking rated. I got two separate people into JJK, and whenever we saw that, it was always panda parkour. We love panda parkour. The next comment is a blast from my past. Makin from Asamo. I just have a thing for bloodthirsty berserkers. I'm aware of how suspect his usage of the word eat is and I can never tell if he's being literal or referring to a saucy activity. Monkey. His dynamic with the MC is also interesting in a this is a train wreck waiting to happen but I can't avert my eyes kind of way. That love quote alone makes me ashamed to have feelings for this cat. Man, it's been forever since I last talked about Osamo on this channel. Easily over like six months, I think. I should get to covering it again sometimes, but to the actual comment, Makin has always been pretty popular. He was one of the first characters to get a story-based alternate unit. And since you mentioned the love quote, I might as well read it. Ah, I can't hold it anymore. It doesn't sound so bad to just eat you and let it be our end. Or maybe you're talking about his other love quote. Hey, can you hear my last will? Take my ashes. Even if you don't eat them, do recall me once in a while. The next comment is about a character from a game we're streaming. Intent, like and subscribe to know when I go live. Jay Kwon from Nine Souls. Disclaimer, spoilers for the fight and lack of info about him. He fights with a long spear and quick projectiles. The fight intensifies when he's near death. And that's about it, surprisingly. Jay Kwon's a fascinating character because it's very rarely you come across a character in, well, anything that's like openly such a terrible person. Not only are we told he's a terrible person, but we see him being a terrible person, and while that does make him one note, he exits the story quick enough for it to not be boring. His boss fight is also pretty fun too. And for today's entry of people trying to drive me mad by bringing up increasingly obscure things, we have the next comment. How about Surly Squirrel from The Nut Job? Specifically the first movie because he was a total douchebag there. A selfish squirrel that only looked after himself, which led to his exile from the park. Why is he like this? Hell if I know, not even the sequel gave any insight to why he became that way. The movie isn't even that great, but Surly is just so damn charming. I think it's his design and the character development he went through that won me over. I think I speak for me and most of the audience when I ask, what in the fresh heck is the nut job? What is this directed DVD looking nonsense? Like seriously, the movie came out in 2014. I wasn't oblivious back then, I was in middle school. How have I never heard of this? Though, to actually address the comment, I do like characters who are unrepentant assholes. But from what you said, he isn't like Jay Kwon who lived as an asshole and died as an asshole, rather getting a redemption arc. Which probably suits the nature of being the protagonist of a movie way better than being a one note character. And for the penultimate comments of the day, we have... Okay, I feel like I'm going insane. Isn't Allegra a cold medicine? You know what? 
Not important. Reading the comment. I would say Allegra from Animalia. She's a bossy, idiotic girl with a posse of other gator gals hanging out with her. The stereotypical teenager with vanity problems galore, but she grows on you the more you see from her. Even when she's the antagonist for the episode. A close second is Morgana from Persona 5. A guy with a bratty ego who wants to be the biggest man on campus even though he is a cat and is stuck on driving duty for the Phantom Thieves. He has his moments, Okuma arc, but I still used him in my final party at the end since his persona was Zoro and I didn't like Ryuji as a result of the backlash at the time. Magician Tarkana fan's job is tough when you're the mascot this time. Okay, addressing Morgana first because I think we all know that's going to be the easier one. Yeah, Morgana gets a lot of shit, deservedly so, but I always love the guy. I even put him in my final party because I'm stupid and love gambling on Miracle Punch. Now to address the elephant, well, more like gator, in the room. Why the fuck is this one named after an allergy medicine? Like seriously, is that is that relevant to her character or are they just trying to drive me insane? Okay, I'm getting distracted. Back to addressing the comment. Mean girls are honestly not too common nowadays, or maybe they are, I'm just not watching the right stuff. But it's always good fun to see one in movies and stuff. And now we have the final comment, finishing us off where we started. Shadow the Hedgehog from the Sonic series. Despite him fighting Sonic, he does care about him and his friends ever since his promise to Maria to make people happy and keeping the world safe from Black Doom and Dr. Eggman. I'm gonna leave you with this piece of advice. I don't care how edgy he is, don't let anyone tell you Shadow isn't the coolest motherfucker to ever fuck mothers. And with that, I end this video. But don't forget, we still have our Patreon shoutouts. For our three stars, we have special thanks to Choron, SkyKing64, Jay Stassi, 87 Werog, Yarn LeFay, Zora Chow, and Marvonla. For four stars, we have Miko, the time to play. And for our Super D Tuper special five star shoutouts, we have First, Vanilla Flower, the Sword of Corruption. Second, Spidey Zack, the surprise box for good or bad. Then, the good old days, the four armed sword. Followed by Heldari Lion, the derailed order. Thank you for watching, do be sure to like and subscribe. As always, this is Rose Fury, signing out.